Well, guys, first off, the audio is terrible on this clip. Again, I had audio issues. I originally thought it was my mic. I just bought a brand new mic and threw it in there and it did not work. So I think it's the GoPro adapter. So anyway, I think I fixed the issue, but bear with me. There's gonna be two, this video and then one more video that's gonna have poor audio. Again, I do apologize. I did the best I could to kind of play with the audio to make it as smooth as possible. But again, I'm sorry about this, guys. Please bear with me. This is not the normal. Thank you guys very much and be sure to subscribe while you're here. We are just rolling. We're barely 5% done with Harvest back at home. I'll be back home soon. Well guys, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all. Welcome to Heart Tongue Family Farms. And today, just getting off work, I'm off pretty late. It's 3.45, just got a call from Pat saying, we gotta shell corn before we get 36 inches of snow in about three hours. So let's get up there. But first, Time for the important stuff. I had to get a shovel. It's gonna snow tonight. I needed a shovel. Judge me. Oh look, pattern filing. Sweet. That's what you call saving the planet right there. A lot of you guys around might be uh, halfway done with harvest, almost done with harvest. Around here, yeah, we're just getting started. We're gonna be picking till Christmas. I just have that bad feeling. It's a traffic jam. They're redoing the road on my on the road in between Preston and Goose Lake, so uh, it's gonna be really nice when it's done. But it kind of stinks that it's going on right now because I waited about ten minutes. That right over the hill is what we did the other night. Minus a little patch, kind of up to the right there. That is very very hilly. All right, on the farm right now, it's still a little it's still a little wet. We finally got the dryer going. You guys kind of see we got the steam running. And there's nothing like quite like drying corn. I'm hoping there's going to be a lot more that's where this came from, but we're going to try and get moving for the snow hits. Pat's already combining brines in the gravity wagon. We have that truck full, the quad is empty, and the grain cart is full of all dry corn. So I got to dump what's going on the grain cart into the quad. So I can take the grain cart up to K Hills and start grain carting the Pat. No, I, do, I don't know if I mentioned this last time, but no, I do not work for Union Pacific. This coat was given to me. Start up the trap, the 400. There she is, all tucked away, nice and neat. Time to wake her from her sleep. Woo, she's cold. She's very cold. Let's let her warm up. By the way, yes, it is cold out. It's like 35 degrees right now. Tonight's supposed to get down to a low of 18. Woo! Just so we're clear, it's supposed to be fall right now. So I just turned the valve, shutting this back gate. I gotta lock up those four corners so it's locked in place. And then I'm gonna, so the 400 can dump on it. Alrighty, quad's good. Now I'm pulling it out. Just gotta be careful so I don't hit anything because I'm like a foot away from the wall and like a foot away from that truck. I'm going to pull it up on the cement, that way I can get the grain cart backed out. I can dump on the quad easier. What are you doing, calf? What are you doing? You that hungry? We're filling that bin because I can hear it filling up. So now i got to get my 400, get that dumped real quick so I can get up the path so we can get cutting. Hopefully combine these 15 acre small patches before the snow hits. And because backing out of sheds are hard, do the light. Now I'm putting up the auger as well. Just try not to hit anything. You should see the auger here shortly, like right there. Hey guys, I took way too long, but uh, I took my time because that's my first cart on mobile of the year. All right, quad is full. I'm gonna put it in the shed right now. Oh yeah, full enough. Not bad for the first time of the year. So put it in the shed and be done with it. Got the flashes on. Got the beacon on. Ready to head down the road. Man, I really need to get a camera system in here. I can't see anything behind me in this big old cart. But on the bright side, we used to got Michael Mobiles to talk to each other. This thing's in reverse right now because the mounting bolt's too big. 
Trying to drown that, drain that down, that's the downtime we get. So we're heading up the Kay Hills right now. That's the first corn that Pat picked. Just getting it started until the head broke. There's the bean field that we drowned that we chopped. If you guys haven't seen that, go check it out. Video will be up in the cards to the top right. Yes, we chopped soybeans. Be sure to check that out. Hi Piper, I-550 Massey, hi little gravity wagons, hi corn. Ryan's coming down the road with a 340 Magnum. I definitely wouldn't be able to, that's what stinks about this road going through town. It's not riding up a two tractor, so I just pulled over and let him go. this car go to just to be sure we're we'll probably just gonna be using wagons today one semi is unhooked the other is not functioning the other is full of dry corn the other is full of dry corn as well now all through town on these real nice nice and narrow streets oh i have any tips and us to watch me everyone's just so nice in this town everyone's waiting all right there he is we're just on the east side of town here Now it's time to combine. Haven't ran grain cart and corn all year, so this will be fun. Yes, I've ran grain cart and canola, wheat, soybeans, and barley, so this is, this is it. Corn's the last of the five big crops. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Alrighty, guys, got this little, I don't know what this is, five acre patch done. Well, I can tell you what it is. It was three dumps. So a full gravity wagon or a full gravity wagon. Oh, he's gonna fold up. A full gravity wagon for 600 bushel plus probably another 400 bushel in my cart. So a thousand bushel divided by 200. So it's a five acre patch. And now we're gonna fold up, move over to the next field. This is one huge reason why we got the folding corn head because we have so many small five, one to ten acre patches that we'd be hooking up on hooking heads so much. It's just not worth it for us to get anything other than a folding head if we go bigger. That's why we that's why we stuck with an eight row head for so long because we can just get away with it. But found this folding twelve row corn head for a steal of a deal last summer. Bought it. And it's been beautiful. And yes, for those of you who don't know, I am a John Deere engineer. Super secret, top secret stuff. Yeah. And what all this corn head does when you fold up the, the inner snoots, the fold snoots at four and ten. Now. Yeah, four and ten, four and nine, they kind of angle in towards the center of the machine. So that way it gives it clearance for the head, the whole head to fold up. Just got two fold cylinders right there. And one on the other side folds up and then the pin locks into place. Beautiful. This is in real time here. I'm trying to, this is in real time when we're doing it. It takes about three minutes to fold up, but three minutes to fold up, three minutes to unfold. Easily beats having another person bring a header, header cart and truck over here, taking five minutes to hook up the header, uh, to unhook the header, pull it over there, find a spot to unhook. Hook up the header another five minutes, run that person over here to get the grain cart. It's just, it's, it's 20 minutes compared to six minutes and no extra vehicle. It's just really, really nice. And he's just about got her folded up. And there it is. Perfect. So now we'll head over to that field right there, which is really hilly. Like, really, really hilly. Right there is the hill. So you guys will see that soon. This is the easy part. Flashes on, hazards, let's go. And also, there would be no way that we could fit the combine with, we barely can fit it with an eight row head going down this way. All right, now time to unfold the head. Done. All right, time to cut her in. Look how steep this stuff is. It's gonna be fun. There he goes, cutting in. Hopefully gonna knock this field out for sure. There's a pretty wet spring in there, so I'm gonna cut right around here. I mean, pretty wet spring, it is a uh, very wet spring. Look at the run he just made. Definitely wet in there, but I'm not making any ruts, which is good, because I have about 20,000 pounds on me right now. Now time to follow Pat. Let's get the field opened up, and we'll get her knocked out. So this stuff is green. You can kind of see how there's a green tint to these leaves. That means that when it froze, this stuff was still really green, which means this stuff is probably 28%. Man, that stuff is still got that green tint to it. And a lot of the ears are still up, which is not good. Good thing we're knocking it out. Right there very sandy. There's not a lot of material. There's not a lot of good dirt there because the corn is about three to four feet tall. But this stuff is a little better. It's about eight feet tall. I'll top out once I get to this corner here. I'll top out and check. Either that or it was really wet. It's a nice little side hill we got here. I'd say it's probably 10 degrees. 
It definitely is not fun to farm. And there's the soybeans that I planted. Right here, they cut them off last week. It's definitely a little humid. There's moisture in the air. It's cold. Very cold. That's why I'm in my car hard. Look at this stuff. That's what happens when we don't if we don't get a timely application of wheat spray on our corn. Luckily, uh, these aren't going to mount to anything. Five feet tall. Stock health is degrading. Well, the tips are starting to break off, but Let's see what this looks like. It's moist. It is black layered, though. When I say black layered, basically literally a layer of black right in the center, but it's moist. It's probably going to yield, I'm hoping, still 200. So I got to, he's going to be full by the time he gets to the top of the hill. He is getting up there. He'll probably have to dump before he gets to the top of that hill because the grain tank isn't that big. And right now it's filling heavy on the left side. We got to adjust the flapper that kind of kicks the flapper that, it, that makes it closer, that fills it more evenly. So he's going to back up, cut me over, cut over 12 rows so I can pull up next to him, and he's going to dump onto me. Now he just filled me, so he's going to keep going around. I got a big enough load for Brian. Brian's going to come in from behind me. He's actually going to, we're going to come up on top of the hill and load out up there. You'll see. Kick and turn. Man, I just about got stuck right there. I had it slipping at about 35%, which my limit is 40. Otherwise, I mean, I don't know what that limit does, but uh, yeah, I was just about stuck. Whew. I'll show you when we go back down the hill, but man, I had a full load. All right, Brian's gonna dump under me after I just about got stuck. And I'll dump on him and get him going. All right, there goes Brian and his full load. Like I say, he's probably got about 600 bushel on him. See if he can get out of here, which I don't think he has no problem with. Get going, Brian's gonna be our truck for the day. He's a little sloppy put my auger in first though yeah that right along the tree is trees is pretty wet I mean granted going up 12% hill doesn't help but uh yeah that's uh that's wet Ugh, I am lucky I made it up there I only had about 800 bushel on too well let's hurry up and dump on Pat this corn's running about 28% or sorry 30% moisture it'll hopefully dry out when you get away from the trees and the dryer's not running great. Sweet! Gotta love harvest bugs, especially when you know you're starting in November. Oh, he's waiting for me. You wanna know what's awesome, guys? We haven't had to use the auxiliary grain tank yet. Oh, as some people call it cap corn or beans, but no, we're good. Good operators don't have to do that. Yeah. That was a joke. I don't care how good you are. You will have cap corn at some point in your life. Especially when you have these hills, uh, you'll have it quite often. Multitasking again. I'm going to be full. Let's hopefully I don't get stuck. I'll let you guys watch the grain car. Well, I, uh, all right, let's do it. to go catch Pat. Guess what time it is. Guess what time it is. Light time. All right. Now looks like we're going to try unloading on the go. Maybe. Maybe, nope. Maybe not. I'm not sure what he's doing. There's Brian and his nice, real bright LEDs. And those are nice. I tell you what, guys, these micro mobiles are awesome for what we have so far. Last year, we could barely hear each other with the radios that we had. We had a mess of Cobra. I don't even know what all we had. We had mostly Cobras, but I mean, really, using the same antennas with these micro mobiles. This one's using a, a small stock antenna, but for the most part, all we did was switch out for these micro mobiles. Awesome, awesome stuff. We really like it so far. Yes, we still have to test it, still test range, and 
once we get on the bigger fields, but for the most part, really, really like this thing so far. passes if that so uh gotta be really quick getting up there so we can at least unload most of this tank when you're unloading wet corn it takes a lot longer to unload with this machine than uh when you're unloading dry corn which sucks a lot more power oh no my deaf ad blue level is low the heck is ad blue come on case you guys are probably wondering why he shakes the auger well the reason is because that he doesn't shake the auger, we just have a lot of corn that just dribbles out. There's nothing to stop it, corn from dribbling out of that auger. So he always shakes it when he's over the bit, when he's over the grain cart at the end. Hello well, guys, we got about probably 96 rows left or so. Maybe a little more than that. It's getting down there. I'm just full again, gonna come up here and wait for Brian. Dang, flab it, I pulled the BJ. Kinda. See that? Right there. That's oh, darn it. Just got Brian loaded up and it is snowing. Loading on the go at night in the snow. Hey, it's not what I was expecting to uh, be doing on my Wednesday night. But at least we're getting stuff done. We're knocking out acres. We're going to get about 20 acres done tonight. Which for us isn't bad. That's like four or five hours worth of work. Because, guys, we don't have flat fields as you can see. We're on a pretty good slope, right? Well, it's kind of hard for you guys to see, but we're on a slope like this, like where the camera's at. So it's how the camera angles at, so it's definitely not easy farm ground by any means. Watching the other fellow corn YouTuber that runs good red combines. Not bad, Cole. Alrighty, last pass for this field and probably for the night. Sweet! There we are. All time to wait for Brian. How do you like these radios compared to last year so far? Yeah, I think so. I'm curious to see once I actually get into some bigger, hillier fields, see how the range works. Also, did you know that Midland has 51 channels? Look at that! Just kidding, it's not an upside down. Yep, that'll be about right. At least we'll be getting as much done as we could. Give us time to get the dryer dialed in and ready to go maybe for this weekend. Playing the waiting game, waiting on Brian. Just got Brian loaded. So here's a nice real tangible example of how good communication tools save time. So I, we are going to be done for the night so Brian doesn't need to come back. So instead of me getting out, taking 30 seconds to get out and tell him he's going to come back, I just told him over the radio, saves us time, hassle, fatigue, and gets us moving. Boogie him, boogie him, boogie him, boys. Let's go racing. Gonna hustle up and get over to him. I'm try to get up to about 15 mile an hour. Don't really like running much faster than that, like, cause that's still cooking in the field. I don't do this very often. In a mean field, about ready to go in a, into a hay field. And there's also snow on the head. It means the snow is really starting to come down. Snow is really starting to come down. Look at all the snow on the head. Yeah, we're going to have to shut down here soon. It's snowing! The reason you don't want to keep combining when there's snow, when there, because when there's snow that gets on the ears itself, they actually end up getting in the combine sieves, what separates the grain from the chaff and crap. And basically it gets in there and starts plugging things up. And what you gotta do is you gotta spend two, three hours in a warm heated shop or out in the freezing cold with the hose to unplug your combine. And trust me, it's a lot of fun. Not like I know from experience or not. Hey, so he's dumping and folding right now. I didn't realize he could fold while moving, that's awesome. I'm gonna hop out, open these gates up, 
I'm going to go back and tarp, tarp my tarp. We can avoid the moisture of the snow on the corn. Because nobody likes some moist corn. Ain't nobody does that. There we are. All done. Now i got to squeeze through this skinny gate hole. Cart's all tarped up. We're heading home. Over the river and through the corn to Grandma's house we go. Quitting time. Time to go dump what I got in the cart into the wagon, get it in the wet bin so we can get dried. What a beautiful day to be alive. It actually is pretty out, but this kind of stinks. Oh well. Don't know, you guys can't tell, but the wet bin's just about full, which is good. We'll have plenty to dry. Pat's gonna move the quad real quick so I can pull this thing up. I'm gonna tuck this baby in for the night. All right, my cart's all tucked away. Let's get stuff put away. Pat's putting the combine away. We're gonna put the gravity wagon and try and cram the quad in here too. Ryan's putting the magnum away. Yeah, that's what I like to see. Yep. Alrighty guys, that's going to be it for me tonight. Hope you guys enjoyed this quick um, impromptu video. I didn't really expect to be uh, here tonight, but it is what it is. We got 25 acres, 23 acres done that we weren't expecting to do. So hey, that's not a bad day. So Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you guys did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Hearttongue Family Farms. And of course, guys, as always, it's a tall, a now, a cow.